Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to look at an introduction to approximating solutions to partial differential equations. So in this introductory topic, we will review partial derivatives and see how to approximate them. We will also discuss partial derivatives with respect to a function of a vector variable. We will describe the gradient and the Laplacian of a real valued function of a, a vector variable, and we will list the upcoming topics we will be looking at. All right, for a function of two or more variables, we can always define a partial derivative. Now, a partial derivative assumes that the variables do not depend on each other, so all of the variables are independent. The total derivative, on the other hand, may be used if one variable depends on another. Uh, for that, refer to your calculus textbooks, but that's beyond the scope of this course as it's not applicable. So for example, a function of t and x, that is a function of two variables, has, a, has two separate partial derivatives. A partial derivative with respect to t represented as di by di t of that function or that function subscript t and a partial with respect to x again also possibly represented by u sub x however we generally in this course will use the di by di t or di by di x notation now the definition of a partial derivative is a limit. So the other variable is held constant, and we again take the limit as u plus t plus delta t, x being held constant, minus u of t x all over delta t. That limit as delta t goes to zero describes the partial derivative with respect to this first variable, and a similar definition for the second variable. Consequently, the same way that the derivative is defined as in terms of a limit, we may use this definition to approximate partial derivatives. Consequently, the partial derivative with respect to t of u at a specific point t and x can be approximated by u at t plus delta t x minus u at t minus delta t also at x constant all over 2 delta t we also have a similar formula for the second derivative and you can see that this is analogous to our approximation of the second derivative with respect to a single variable only now it is with respect to the first variable and the same as for partial an approximation of the partial derivative with, with respect to the second variable and an approximation of the partial with respect second partial with respect to the second variable now rather than writing a function of n variables an alternative notation is to write u as a function of a vector variable and let us assume that the vector is n-dimensional. In this case, we can approximate the partial derivative with respect to, for example, the second variable in this notation. So x1 and x3 are held constant, while for x2, we calculate the function at x2 plus h and the function at x2 minus h all over 2h. So this is our approximation of the partial derivative with respect to, in this case, the second variable. Now, you may recall from your linear algebra course that E sub k is often used to represent the kth canonical basis vector. So in R3, E1 is just the vector 1, 0, 0 e2 is the vector 0, 1, 0, and e3 is the vector 0, 0, 1. Thus, we note that the vector x1, x2, x3 plus h in the second variable is the same as adding 
the vector x1, x2, x3 onto the vector 0, h0. That's just vector algebra. And of course, that second vector, 0, h0, is the same as h times the vector 0, 1, 0. And thus we have the vector x plus h times the second canonical vector. Thus, from a linear algebra perspective, the partial of the function u with respect to the kth variable is simply the vector x plus h times the kth canonical vector minus u evaluated at the x, x, vector x minus h times the kth canonical vector all over 2h. Of course, we have a similar definition of the second partial. Again, in both cases, we calculate x plus h times the kth canonical vector and x minus h times the kth canonical vector. Now in this course, we are going to be dealing with real valued functions that are parameterized by both time and space. Now, such a function will be denoted as either u of two variables, t and x, if it is only in one dimension of space, such as, for example, the plucking of a string, or perhaps a wire. Alternatively, it may also be represented as u as a function of time and a two or three dimensional spatial variable denoted by a vector, in this case, the vector x. So if we're dealing with two or three spatial dimensions, the partial with respect to time is simply approximated by modifying or shifting the first variable and the same for the second partial with, with respect to time. If we are taking the partial with respect to one of the spatial dimensions, we are now focused on modifying the x vector in the corresponding dimension. And again, the same formula applies for calculating the second partial with respect to one of the spatial dimensions. Now we're going to be solving partial differential equations. So just like before, we are going to have conditions and the conditions will depend on the variable. The time variable will have initial conditions. We have to know the state of the system at every point in space at some initial time. For the space variables, however, we will rely on boundary conditions. So if the space variable is one dimensional, the boundary condition must be specified on an interval AB. If the space variable is two or three dimensional, the boundary conditions must be specified on the boundary of a two or three dimensional region that is bounded in space. We'll look more at this later when we start solving the heat and wave equations in higher dimensions. Now, if u of x is a real valued function of a vector variable, we will define the gradient as follows. The gradient, which I am representing by an arrow point, uh, a triangle pointing down with an arrow on top to emphasize that this is a vector. The gradient operator is a vector of n partial derivatives, where n is the dimension of x. Now, if we apply this operator onto the function u, this essentially takes the partial of u with respect to each of the n variables. And again, as you can see, this is a vector valued function. Hence, my preference to put a small arrow on top of the gradient operator, the arrow, the triangle pointing down. 
Now, if u of x is a real valued function of a vector variable, we will define the Laplacian as follows. It is the inner product of the gradient operator and the gradient of the vector. So we're taking the inner product of these two. Now, that essentially says we are applying the first operator onto the first entry of the second vector plus the gradient operator with respect to the second variable applied to the second entry of the second vector and so on and so forth. And this is just the sum of the second partials of the function u. Now, we are going to denote this as the gradient operator squared applied to u. And because the result is not a vector, I will leave off the arrow. So this is a scalar value, which is the sum of the second partials. This is sometimes denoted as the triangle pointing up applied to u. However, in this course, we will use the notation of the gradient operator squared. Now, if u is a function of both t and a vector, value, vector variable x, then the gradient and the Laplacian will only de be defined with respect to the spatial coordinates. So for example, even though u is a function of t, the gradient will only be applied to either the two or three spatial dimensions. Similarly, the as a comment, the gradient and the Laplacian simplify to the partial derivative and the second partial with respect to that one spatial variable if there is only one spatial dimension. Looking ahead in this topic, we will approximate solutions to the heat equation in one spatial dimension, the wave equation in one spatial dimension, Laplace's equation in two and three spatial dimensions, and the heat and wave equations in two and three spatial dimensions. Following this introduction, you now have reviewed the definition of partial derivatives. You have seen how to approximate partial derivatives, and you've seen how to approximate partial derivatives when one of the variables is a vector. You understand the idea of the gradient and the Laplacian, and you are aware of the upcoming topics where we will be looking at approximations to solutions of the heat equation, the wave equation, and Laplace's equation. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!